Let's find the length of the helix. R of t is cosine of ti plus sine of tj plus tk on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we've graphed this helix once before in a video. It's a helix that starts on the x-axis and then rotates up and around so that it finishes its one helix, one wrapper, and right above where it started. Not drawn to scale, but that's what we're trying to find the length of. We know that that arc length should be a definite integral from 0 to 2 pi of the speed dt. So I need to find the speed. First, I'll find velocity. Just by taking a derivative. And now, speed. All right. The square root of sine squared plus cosine squared plus 1. Well, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. The speed is the square root of 2. Okay, so we have a constant speed. Not all speeds are constant, but that makes this arc length very easy to find. I'm looking for an integral from 0 to 2 pi of root 2 dt. Well, that's root 2 t from 0 to 2 pi, and so I get 2 root 2 pi. That's my arc length. 2 times the square root of 2 times pi. Okay, so we finished this problem. That's all we needed to do, but I want to make one other point while we're here. We have a vector function that gives us the position of an object in motion in that helical, on that helical path between time 0 and 2 pi that's this. We just took a derivative to find the velocity vector, which was minus sine t cosine t 1. If we took one more derivative, we'd get an acceleration vector. Minus cosine t minus sine t zero. And I want to think about the speed that we found just a moment ago. It's a very famous physics question. You're moving in a car. The speedometer always says a constant speed. Can the acceleration be non-zero? And the answer is yes, because you could be turning. Or in this example, maybe you're going up a helical path in a parking deck. So you can have a non-trivial, a non-zero acceleration, even with a constant speed. 